Hello everyone, Samantha here. I pray all is well with you. This is a quick video. Well, I think it's going to be quick. Um, actually, it's a video that I'm doing because um, I uploaded a video about this Bible and um, suggested it for people that um, do not like all the artsy, artsy stuff in their Bible and just, I gave a suggestion on how it could be used um, without putting a bunch of stickers and sort and um, I forgot the sister's name um, please forgive me but her channel is wholeheartedly for the Lord wholeheartedly for the Lord and um, she asked if I would show um, a process show my process for journaling in this Bible so first thing I want to say is that every day I don't get to journal in here um, and I'm reading through the Bible. And so I don't limit myself to just reading if this is in front of me. Because things happen every day. And um, I work. And I don't travel with this. So if I don't get to read it at home, um, I'm still going to read. And so sometimes I'll go back to journaling it. And sometimes I'll just pick up where I am in journaling it. And um, I learned to not just get so stuck with, oh, if if I don't have this in front of me, I can't read and then I can't journal. No. So that's the first thing I want to say. Um, ideally, I would like to be able to journal in this every single day, but um, it just doesn't happen that way for me. And so I had to um, pray and ask God to help me um, still enjoy the process and you know, show me how to, you know, do it per pertaining to my life. So that's the first thing I want to say. Um, maybe you're someone that can pull this out every day and journal in it. As you can see, it's some journaling here because I had went ahead. I didn't think about, oh, um, I'm not up to, um, um, this is a new Bible. So I need to, you know, just journal from the front. No, what I did was I did go back, but I didn't limit myself to just going all the way back to the front. I picked up where I was um, in my process of reading. So, but today it's February 3rd, so I wanted to go ahead and show three ways a person can journal on, in this Bible. And these are three ways that I usually practice journaling um, with something like this. So one is I'll pray, God speak to my heart. It doesn't have to be a very lengthy prayer. It's whatever the Holy Spirit is placing on my heart at the time. And one, one way is something that stood out about God, human beings, or events, or situations when I'm reading. So I may do that. That's one way. So something that just stood out and mainly something that stood out about God. And again, it could be human beings, events, or situations. Another thing I might journal on is a life application. Maybe I read something and I need to apply it to my life. And it's like, oh, okay. I need to apply that. The third way I may journal is I might write a prayer based on something that I read. Right? So it's connected to life application, but I may just write the prayer itself and embed the application in the prayer. So... Um, I hope that's clear. One is something that stood out about God, human beings, or events and situations. That's one way I might journal in the margin. The second way is maybe something I've seen that I have to apply. And a third way is a prayer based on what I read. So I'm going to go ahead and show uh, my process. Of course, it won't be all three of these. But I'm going to read and then see, you know, what the Lord lays on my heart. So this says, <clears throat> a plague of blood. Exodus 7, 14 through 25. And then it gives, you know, the time frame, 1446 or 1280 BC. Then the Lord said to Moses, Pharaoh's heart is stubborn. And he still refuses to let the people go. So go to Pharaoh in the morning as he, as he goes down to the river. 
Stand on the bank of the Nile and meet him there. Be sure to take along the staff that turned into a snake. Then announce to him, The Lord, the God of the Hebrews, has sent me to tell you, Let my people go, so they can worship me in the wilderness. Until now, you have refused to listen to him. So this is what the Lord says. The Lord says, I will show you that I am the Lord. Look, I will strike the water of the Nile with this staff in my hand and the river will turn and turn to blood. The fish in it will die and the river will stink. The Egyptians will not be able to drink any water from the Nile. So I'm going to stop right there. And I'm going to journal on that because God has, now this more so is something that stood out to me about God. And it's relevant because the Lord has been speaking to me about justice and advocacy for people that are oppressed. That has been the word he's been speaking to me for the past three days. And I cannot shake this word and he's telling me to cry aloud pray for those that are oppressed in any way in society and he's actually showing me how to pray because I used to be um afraid to pray um God's justice because I thought I was being unmerciful but the Lord had to teach me some things and he's telling me, I want justice. Do not allow people to feel like they, God wants them to be victims and that it's okay. Just so he could show mercy to offenders. Leaving victims feeling like they are unloved. There is a balance in God. He's merciful to all. He doesn't just care about the victimizer getting mercy. He cares about the victims having mercy as well. And so there's so much I can say about that. But just reading this section right here, it's just confirming to me that God is a God of justice and he does not like oppression and when there is a leader that's oppressing people God will send them a warning if they do not heed as he told he said in this scripture he, he told Moses to tell Pharaoh until now you have refused to listen so God is going to do something through Moses which is turn that river into blood. So what stood out to me is something about God. And I'm going to write that starting from this section right here. So this is one way um, an individual can journal in this Bible um, or in any Bible, you know, or in any book. So let me show you right here. God. will send a warning to someone who is oppressing individuals. So I see how God acts in here. Remember, Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forever. So this is something that God does. God will send a warning to someone who is oppressing individuals if they do not listen to God And stop 
there will be consequences. And, you know, yeah, so that is one way. Something that stood out about God, events, situation. So maybe at another time, I'm trying to think, should I go on and sh show two more ways? But it may not be, as I read on, these two other ways will um, come up for me to, you know, journal in this way. So, you know, I'm going to stop right there and I'm going to put, okay, you know what? I think I want to read on. I think I see um, a way for two and three to be combined. Then the Lord said to Moses, tell Aaron, take your staff and raise your hand over the waters of Egypt or its rivers, canals, ponds and all the reservoirs turn all the water to blood everywhere in Egypt the water will turn to blood even the water stored in wooden bowls and stone pots so Moses and Aaron did just as the Lord commanded them as Pharaoh and all of his officials watched Aaron raised his staff and struck the water of the Nile suddenly the whole river turned to blood the fish in the river died and the water became so foul that the Egyptians couldn't drink it. There was blood everywhere throughout the land of Egypt. But again, the okay, but again, the magicians of Egypt used their magic and they too turned water into blood. So Pharaoh's heart remained hard. Ooh, he refused to listen to Moses and Aaron just as the Lord had predicted. Pharaoh returned to his palace and put the whole thing out of his mind. Then all the Egyptians dug along the riverbank to find drinking water, for they couldn't drink the water from the Nile. Seven days passed from the time the Lord struck the Nile. So, I'm going to put two and three together because right here it says, so Moses and Aaron did just as the Lord commanded them. So right here, um, I'm going to put when given and instruction from God to Confront and warn, as well as do something When given an instruction from God to confront and warn, as well as do something, application, right? About a situation. Let me make sure my frame. I pray, God. That I pray God that you and I put I'm gonna put pray I'm gonna put ask I pray ask God that you help me to obey and not be afraid of the back. Lash. Father, please help me to not 
um, be distracted by whosoever, um, by those, I should say, who refuse to heed you. Keep me believing you are working and in control. So that's what I, I so that's a number two and number three combined because the bottom line is that Pharaoh, you know, he had his magicians rise up and do the same thing as Moses and Aaron did. So it was just like, oh, big deal. So his heart was hardened, but God knew that he was not going to, he was not going to listen. He was just, he was going to still not listen to the warning. Moses could have got, you know, very discouraged and say, oh my God, like, you know, this, you told me to confront this man. And he is still doing the same old, same old. But God knew what he was doing. God was and still is in control. God was in control back then. He's still in control now. And God knew that it was going to have to be um, some severe consequences for Pharaoh to actually wake up. Um, and really see, like, wait a minute. The God... The, the God of the Israelites are fighting for them. So, um, so it made me think about, you know, um, when God tells me to confront a situation or give a warning, I need to just do what God says do. So I wrote, when given an instruction from God to confront one as well as do something about a situation, I pray I ask God that, and I combine the prayer, I ask that you help me to obey and not be afraid of the backlash. Father, please help me to not be distracted by those who refuse to heed you. Keep me believing you are working and in control. So, yeah, so there you go. That was three, actually three ways. I, com I did one, show something that stood out about God. God will send a warning to someone who is oppressing individuals. If they do not listen to God and stop, there will be consequences. And then um, I show two and three, which is what I just read. Um, life application and prayer. Um, when I read, when given an instruction from God to confront and warn as well as do something about a situation and then I wrote my prayer to God to do it um not be distracted and not be afraid of the backlash so I pray that that helps um someone wholeheartedly for the Lord I, I I pray that that helps that's not the only way to journal and that is not the only way I have journaled or the only way I journal but so far in this Bible that's what I've been doing and I wanted to show that um here so, with that being said, I want to say thanks for watching. God bless you. And remember, Jesus loved you. Bye-bye.